Hey guys, what's going on today? Um, my name is Jose and today I basically want to talk about how to invest and stock market investing for beginners 2020 edition. A lot of people always ask me, uh, what do I use to trade? What do I use to invest? Uh, what are some of the best brokerages? How much money do I need to invest? So today we're gonna go over a couple questions, some of the most popular topics and questions that does involve investing into stocks or investing into dividends or trading, whatever that may be. Uh, I wanna go over basically what is a stock, uh, the best apps and brokers and where to buy stocks, how do you essentially make money in the stock market, um, what types of profits and what amounts of money you can expect to make or look to make, uh, different trading strategies, I'm also gonna talk about those, whether it be uh, just trading or long-term investing and holding. And I'm also going to talk about what you need to study, uh, where do you find info, and how much money you need to start is one of the most popular questions. So uh, to basically get started up, what is a stock? A stock is basically part ownership in a company. So whether you buy McDonald's or you buy a part of Tesla or Apple, Amazon, whatever it may be, you are part owner of that company. Um, if you're investing a couple hundred dollars, couple thousand dollars, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, you're still gonna be a very small owner, but at the end of the day, you are still part owner of that company. Uh, the stock market is basically a, an exchange where stocks are bought and sold and traded on a daily basis. It is open for seven hours a day, uh, Monday through Friday, except some certain holidays. I know it's closed on Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, just two off the top of my head. <clears throat> and then basically, number two, some of the best apps and brokerages to actually start investing. Uh, number one, of uh, my number one personal favorite is actually Robinhood. I have I have been using them for a while now, and if you follow me on Instagram, I always post about them, the my daily profits I make on that, and how my profits keep growing monthly, weekly, yearly, whatever it may be. I've had a lot of people tell me or ask me and say that Robinhood is a scam. <laughs> like, I don't, um, Robinhood is a scam. They've been around for a lot of years now actually and they're one of the most popular brokerages because they offer zero commission when you buy or sell a stock normally um an, a brokerage like fidelity investments a while ago they used to charge about five dollars every time you bought and sold a share plus you had to pay the price that that share was worth but now almost all brokerages are commission free but i still do stick with Robinhood because they are one of the most popular and one of the most user-friendly brokerages to actually begin with um so the way it works is basically if you want to buy a share of tesla i believe right now it is trading for about 750 dollars all you would have to do in Robinhood is you would need just $750 in your bank account to actually purchase that one share of Tesla. Um, other brokerages you can also use that are pretty good as well. You can use Fidelity Investments. That would be my number two option if you are trading with or investing uh, bigger amounts of money, typically hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, you could also do E-Trade, Webull, TD Ameritrade, and there's a couple other ones. I would highly just recommend Robinhood. I am going to put the referral link um, for my Robinhood in my description. Basically, when you sign up with that link, you are going to get two free stocks. I will also get one free stock, but if you just normally go up and sign on Robinhood by yourself, you'll only get one free stock. Um, I'm not saying you have to, but the link is in my bio if you do wanna get that extra stock. Um, number three, what I'm going to go into is how do you make money in the stock market? So it's pretty simple. I'm not going to go into the, um, the harder options like doing options trading or doing day trading, uh, swing trading. I'm just going to keep it super simple. So let's just say you buy Apple at $100 per share. All you spend is that $100 to buy the company and a couple months goes by and let's just say Apple appreciates over time, just like any other asset like real estate, uh, gold, bonds, uh, anything like that. And you sell Apple at $150, you just made a $50 profit per share. And obviously the more money you're going to invest, the more money you are going to make. 
So jumping into the next topic, um, what kinds of money can you expect to make? What types of profit can you expect to make while investing in the stock market? So like I talked about saying, if you bought Apple for $100 and sold it for $150, therefore you made a $50 profit. Uh, but that's just with one share. So just to show you guys for an example, um, I bought 20 shares of Tesla at about $337.71 per share and that was on november 7th 2019 i spent about uh six thousand seven hundred fifty four dollars and fifteen cents for those 20 shares and if i were to sell those shares today the time i'm filming this video tesla is trading for about 745 750 dollars and those shares are valued at today at fourteen thousand roughly fifteen thousand dollars almost so if you subtract my initial um, investment that I made with Tesla back in November I spent six thousand seven hundred fifty four dollars and if you subtract it by today's current trading price I made a profit so far of about eight thousand one hundred and sixty three dollars the second way you get paid um, by in stocks is through dividends so if you invest into some of the blue chip stocks some of the higher paying stocks um, that higher paying dividends like McDonald's, CVS, Johnson & Johnson, those offer anywhere from about a 2% to almost a 3% uh, yearly dividend. So the way it works is if McDonald's is $100 per share, you are going to get paid 3%, which is $3 a year per share you own. And that's good because you are going to be getting paid and you are also going to be uh, your shares will also increase in value so that's another way to make money in the stock market but i wouldn't always count on dividends even though big companies like the ones i talked about mcdonald's cvs johnson and johnson they do increase their dividends from time to time year by year but at any moment they can cut dividends but the bigger companies like those three haven't cut dividends and they've been um, honoring their dividends and paying them for 20 30 40 something years now which is really awesome so that's another way to make money in the stock market um, different trading strategies this is another topic I want to talk about so different trading strategies essentially there is three the way I look at it you can either do uh, day trading swing trading or you can do long-term buying and holding that's what I would highly recommend. I would not recommend day trading or swing trading if you are a beginner because you can lose a lot of money and I don't want you to do that. This is not what this channel is about. Don't lose your money. Um, day trading typically takes your, you buy a stock and you sell it within hours, minutes, or seconds with the new machines. Uh, that's how quick it can be. Swing trading can typically take between a couple days, a couple weeks, or a month usually that you invest and sell that company or sell your stocks uh, long term. So long term to actually see a good big growth, it would typically take about three to five years realistically. I feel like most people can pull off long term investing and buying and holding if you are um, wanting to make money in the stock market 95 percent of people that's what i would recommend for them to do if you actually want to make some profit and you want to invest your money you can sell stocks in seconds that's what i like about the magic of stocks you can um get rid of them like that so if you have a hundred thousand dollars in tesla and it appreciates by ten percent in a day so you make ten thousand dollars in one day if you're happy with that and you don't think Tesla is going to continue to increase, which I personally think it will, um, you can sell your stocks just like that. That's the magic I like about stocks. You can't really do that with real estate. You know, if you go and buy a $500,000 home and you want to sell it, you can't magically sell it in seconds. It doesn't really work like that. So where could you do research, how to do research and how to learn about a company? So let's just say you want to do a little bit more research on Microsoft or Tesla, whatever, for example. Basically, all you would have to do is go on Google and type in and look up investor relations. That's basically going to talk about um, reports on, on the annual, 
uh, income statements, balance sheets, and all of that. They're also going to talk about their other competitors, how they are planning to invest later on in the future, what types of strategies they do, what type of new products they plan on coming out slash work with. And after you have read all that, you have to ask yourself, are you confident with this company going forward? Are you confident with their business model? Are you confident that they will grow within the next three to five years? Just picture that and see um, for yourself if you believe that that company will be profitable and expand over the long term. Um, if you aren't simply comfortable with a certain company, don't worry about it. There's thousands of other companies out there that you can look at and I wouldn't really invest into anything that you do not understand. If you do not understand and you do not believe in a certain company, even though somebody else is telling you to invest in it, you're better off just not investing because at the end of the day, you want to feel confident in what you are putting your money into. You don't wanna go invest into something just because so-and-so said this, or so and so said that, or this reason or that reason, you want to go ahead and do your own due diligence and research and see if it is actually something worth investing in. Um, and another topic that I wanna to talk about, how long do I need to invest for? How long do I need to do research for? Basically, how long until I know everything? So I'm first off gonna tell you, you're never ever going to know everything. I simply myself have been investing and researching for a couple of years now and I still really feel like a beginner um, to some extent, but I say it takes about one to two years. If you're studying and you're keeping up and see how stock prices are fluctuating and growing and keeping up with analysis and market data and the news and all of that, I say it takes you about a year or two to actually have a good understanding um, on how the markets work and what certain things or circumstances affect uh, fluctuation in pricing and everything, whether it be earnings, uh, tariffs, news, all of that. So I hope I never get to the point where I know everything because you should never, ever, ever get to that point where you feel like you know everything or anything about a certain topic. I like to keep learning. That's the beauty about the stock market because you never will know anything. You can always continue to learn and improve your strategies and just do better research and always grow because at the end of the day, the more money, um, you're gonna make more money by the more, by the more you learn basically. Uh, you can get smarter and better with your decisions over time. It's all about experience. Um, you'll progress on a yearly basis, monthly basis, whatever it may be, if you continue to study and learn everything and actually put in the time, you will be um, profitable over the long period of time. Uh, basically, like the saying is, the more you learn, the more you earn. And I would stay away from some trading strategies, stay away from margin investing, we don't wanna do that. So honestly, just stay away from day trading, swing trading, because over the course of time, if you just buy and hold a certain stock, your odds are, your odds are pretty good of coming out profitable over the long period of time. Um, not so much necessarily with day trading and swing trading because statistically, 95% of traders are not profitable. I'm not saying you can't be profitable. I'm just saying that the odds are in your favor of actually being profitable, whether you wanna do swing trading, day trading, uh, all of that. So another popular question that I personally get asked all the time, how much money do I need to invest? Uh, what types of money do I need to invest? What amounts? Uh, could I invest a couple hundred dollars? Can, could I invest $10? Yes, it is always better to start off small, whether it be a couple hundred dollars or even a couple thousand dollars. Basically, I love when young people want to start investing or want to learn to invest because you have the power of compound interest over time because the money you invest right now in your late teens, early 20s, even early 30s is going to be some of the most important money that you are going to ever have um, because 
20, 30, 40 years from now, the money you invest now, that's what's gonna support you later on in the future, and it's gonna put you in a completely different situation if you didn't take action as a, uh, while you were young, to where, you know, where you're 50, 60 years old. So basically, the way I like to do it is always better to start off small, because if you invest a thousand dollars, let's just, let's just use a thousand dollars for an example, and you lose 30%, you're only going to be down three hundred dollars. That three hundred dollars, you know, you're only going to have seven hundred dollars. But that three hundred dollars is not going to be some magical money that's going to be life changing. You know, it's not going to be. You're not going to die if you lose three hundred dollars. You know, it might suck. Um, three hundred dollars is not going to be the end of the world if you do lose that. So let's just say, you know, you start investing, uh, forty eight years old, fifty years old, whatever, and you have. $500,000 saved and you want to start learning to invest at 50 years old if you invest your $500,000 at 50 years old and you don't make the wisest or the brightest choice um, and you lose about 50% you're going to basically lose $250,000 and yeah we don't want to do that that is not a place you want to be so it's always better to start off investing in smaller amounts and as you get better and progress, let your investments just grow over time. <clears throat> and another question. So basically, if you just wanna ignore most of what I talked about or all of what I talked about, um, let's just say you're lazy and you don't wanna do research, you don't wanna make the efforts to actually study, you don't wanna read investor relations, you, want, you don't wanna listen to earnings calls, none of that. Can you still make money in the stock market? Yes, you can still make money in the stock market. It is not going to be that hard. Basically, just invest into a broad index fund. That is what I would normally recommend. That is what I got my little sister to start doing, investing in a broad index fund. Uh, basically, the S&P 500 is one of the most popular ones you can invest in. You can invest in the Vanguard 500. You can invest in the NASDAQ. Uh, just do your own research into what an index fund is. If you don't want to do any research on the other previous things I talked about, just do yourself a favor and just research what an index fund is. And you're looking at about an 8 to 12% return a year average over the course of 20 years. That is what the S&P 500 or the Vanguard 500 has provided over the long term. Um, so just for an example, in one year, if you invest $100,000 and you know the s p 500 goes crazy or the nasdaq goes crazy like it did this year let's just say you make a 30 percent return it's not always going to be like that but we're just throwing that out there so you make a 30 percent gain on a hundred thousand dollars you just made thirty thousand dollars that year off letting your one hundred thousand dollars just sit there in a broad index fund it's not gonna happen like that every year though. There's gonna be some years where you normally just get an eight to 12% return. Sometimes you might even lose money, but hold it in there and over the long term, you will see an average of an eight to 12% return a year per year for the long term. Um, there's no shame investing into index funds. I'm, you know, you're not gonna get made fun of for investing into index funds. They're probably some of the best and the safest things you can do if you are a little bit um, nervous and you don't really want to pick individual stocks. I personally believe that you can beat the market over the long period of time if you do your own due diligence and research stocks and actually become a pretty wise investor and know what to look for when you're investing. Definitely, you can outperform the market. Um, likely over the next 10 years, you will come out profitable if you invest into a broad index fund. Um, whether you're investing with a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, or even ten to fifty dollars, it will be worth it over time. If you just stay with that mindset, if you continue with that mindset that you're never ever going to have enough money to invest, or oh, I don't want to invest now, I'll invest in five years, I'll invest in ten years, I'll invest when I have a little bit more money. Basically, if you never get started, you probably 
never will get started. That's just how the mind works. That's how everything is. The name of the game is basically just to get started because if you go out there and you're playing basketball, if you're playing football, whatever, you're not gonna know how good you are or how you react until you're actually in the situation. You're not gonna know whether you want to sell, whether you want to hold, whether you want to do whatever with your company or the stocks that you have bought until you actually go and buy something and invest in it and just see how it plays out over the course of days, weeks, months, years, whatever it may be. Um, basically, it's always a good time to start investing. I think it's good to start early. It's not the best to start in 20 years because if you start now, you're going to be very knowledgeable in 20 years because you might not make the best decisions in 20 years when you have more money you can pick the wrong stocks and you will lose a lot of money um you won't know how good you are until you actually just get started up that's the whole um thing behind it that's one of the biggest things that you have to mentally break is just getting started investing and making it a priority honestly the better you are in your early years um, it's going to transition to how great you are at investing, whether you're 40, 50, 60 years old, to actually make more money and preserve your wealth. Uh, it's always better to start off with $500 to a couple thousand dollars. No amount of money is actually too small to start investing. It is always better just to start off smaller when you're younger and you don't have that much money to my name. So I hope you guys like this video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram. Um, I'm gonna post it right here. Please follow me on Instagram. Please like today's video. Thank you for all the support. And please hit that subscribe button. I will be posting uh, more videos in the future about stocks, dividends, and how to grow your wealth throughout your lifetime. Thank you guys and have a great rest of your day.